Hello everyone. Now I'll be discussing question of cardiology. Well, we have a 64 year old man and he comes to you in the emergency department with complaint of palpitation, progressive shortness of breath over the past several weeks. And he develops a choking sensation accompanied by a dry cough every time he tries to lie down. No pain chest, putum production, lightheadedness or no syncope. He is hypertensive for last 20 years. And medication is non-compliant. This 30 pack year history of smoking, strong family cars to smoking. BP is still very high. Tachycardia, irregular, irregular pulse. Basal, bi-basal crackles are there. Edema is there. Echocardiography, normal size left ventricle with left ventricle hypertrophy. And ejection fraction is 55% with no mitral valve or aortic valve disease. The answer to this question is diastolic dysfunction. Why this? So, in this patient, the clinical presentation is consistent with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, what we call as HFPEF what we also call as diastolic dysfunction. What are the points which are favoring diastolic dysfunction? Exertional dyspnea, orthopnea, that the patient has choking sensation, dyspnea when lying flat, that is the indication of, of orthopnea and by basilar rals are there. Well, and lower extremity edema is there, Now, if you look into these four of things, these four points are seen in left ventricular failure also or so-called in, in systolic dysfunction. Okay. But the one point which really tells you that we are dealing with diastolic dysfunction, that means preserve ejection fraction. That is... In echocardiography, you are getting 55% of the ejection fraction. That means, by and large, clinically, both systolic and diastolic dysfunction, they have a many uh, feature common uh, as far as clinical examination is concerned. But finally, if the echocardiography is the one we decide whether it is normal ejection fraction or reduced ejection fraction is there. So now, so now it is no doubt that we are dealing with diastolic dysfunction that is Preserve ejection fraction is there. Now, why it is there? It is all due to maybe hypertension. The patient is hypertensive for the last 20 years and he is totally non-compliant about hypertension. Even right now also, the patient BP is 182 by 105 and is a really very high BP. And LVH on echocardiogram, that means it has been long-standing disease. Hypertrophy never occurs overnight, but LV size can be normal or increase in diastolic dysfunction. In our case, the LV size is normal. So that means only hypertrophy is there. And in fact, the LV size normal again is more toward the, with the, with the preserved ejection fraction because in case of systolic dysfunction, this is definitely increased. Uh, but however, this can increase in the preserved ejection fraction also. Well, it's a very uh, now uh, heart failure with uh, preserved ejection fraction is a common cause of decompensated heart failure. As as high as fifty percent of the patient hospitalized for congestive heart failure. So it's a fairly common. Fifty percent is a huge amount. Now diastolic dysfunction. What is the basic pathophysiology? Why diastolic dysfunction occurs? Impaired myocardial relaxation or increased wall stiffness. That means compliance is reduced, it's not able to, it has become very stiff, it's not able to expand. And that lead to increased L, LV and diastolic pressure, that is LV EDP increase, like abnormal LV filling pressure by echocardiogram. So by and large, you can say there is impaired expansion of the myocardium that leads to, that lead to diastolic dysfunction. Okay. Well, 
Now, what happened? Increased LV and diastolic volume is transmitted to left atrium and pulmonary vein and capillary causing pulmonary congestion. And that's the reason why the patient has dyspnea and exercise intolerance, so-called dyspnea on exertion. Okay. Well, now in this case, it has been further aggravated by atrial fibrillation. Why? Patient has palpitation and the most important is irregular, irregular pulse. Well, uh, in fact, when you are getting irregular, irregular pulse in any question, it means you are dealing with atrial fibrillation. There is no other condition where we have irregular, irregular pulse. So we are very clear about it. Now, how does atrial fibrillation contribute further to heart failure? Loss of atrial kick and short diastolic filling time because of tachycardia. Let me explain to you both of them. So first of all, let me talk about short filling time. We know very well the normal heart rate is 72 per minute. That means each cardiac cycle get 0.8 second. 72 in 60 second. That means each cardiac cycle is about 0.8. Out of this, systole is systolic period is 0.3 and diastolic period is 0.5 seconds. But now when the heart rate goes very, very high, Definitely, because this both time will be will get reduced very obviously. And one more thing, coronary filling occurs during diastole. And when atria contracts, okay, atria contract, and that pushes 30% of the blood into the ventricle. Let me explain to you. This is the heart. And when diastole start, early diastole, 70% of the blood come from atria to ventricle in early diastole. And near the, near the end of diastole, this atria contact and that pushes around 30% of the blood into the ventricle. And this is known as atrial kick. So definitely when atrial fibrillation occurring, this atria is not contacting. That means 30% of blood which was supposed to go uh, by atrial contraction into ventricle will not go. That means amount of blood coming to uh, ventricle is reduced by 30% and this blood uh, already in, in this case, in case of left ventricle and diastolic pressure is very, very high. So more and more uh, blood will, uh, pressure will be contributed to atria and will be transmitted to the pulmonary veins and finally to capillaries. So that further contribute to, to uh, left ventricle uh, failure with preserved ejection fraction and of course ka, the, ka, the amount of blood coming to ventricle reduced by tachycardia remember in ka, in atrial fibrillation the ventricle rate is very ventricle rate is very very high in our case also the pulse ventricle rate is around 120 diastolic film time is reduced more blood accumulates in the atria and that further precipitate heart failure so I hope you are clear about it. What is atrial kick is the atrial contraction at the end of, near the end of diastole. It's a late diastolic feature. Okay. Now a very simple question. What is core pulmonal? This is option A is incorrect. So stop the video. I have a question for you. Write down the answer. Very simple question. What is core pulmonal? And believe me, this question is done wrong by almost 90% of people commit mistake in this question. Well, I'm sure by now you have written the answer in your copy. It is the right heart enlargement with or without failure. Right heart failure. Secondary to lung parenchyma, pleura or chest wall disease is core pulmonal. So RV dysfunction would be seen on echocardiography. That can be seen, but definitely enlargement dysfunction may be seen, may or may not be there. It would not cause, definitely it will not lead to by basal crackles. Now, which murmur, one more question for you. Which murmur is commonly heard in core pulmonary? Quickly write down the answer in your copy. Well, the murmur of tricuspid regurgitation is heard in core pulmonary. Now, option C is incorrect. High output failure. Well, it can occur in a patient with severe anemia, hyperthyroid, Beri-beri, 
pager disease and av fistula okay or any av fistula they all contribute to high output failure well in our patient it is more consistent with uh, h hf pef multi vessel coronary artery disease is usually lead to lv systolic dysfunction usually and this is due to ischemia or infarction well in this case usually it is lv ejection factor is reduced because it's type of systolic dysfunction and abnormal wall motion normality is seen in transthoracic echocardiogram which is not seen in our case and it in our, in our case the echocardiography there was left ventricular hypertrophy there was no uh, regional wall motion abnormality so this is ruled out small airway bronchoconstriction which lead to a type of asthma will not explain the patient orthopnea or lower extremity edema they will not explain this is ruled out and moreover no ronchi in this ronchi will be there on auscultation but in our case there are no ronchi so this is again ruled out so now the golden line to remember patient with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction often due to hypertensive heart disease the typical clinical fe feature are of normal lv ejection fraction and objective ev evidence of diastolic dysfunction impaired myocardial relaxation or increase lv wall stiffness lead to increase lv and diastolic pressure and that pressure is transmitted to la and way later on into the pulmonary circulation now what are the important some let me tell you the important cause of diastolic dysfunction also called heart failure with preserve lv uh, lv function diastolic heart failure hypertension is a very very common cause and that can lead to hyper left ventricular hypertrophy restrictive cardiomyopathies infiltrative cardiomyopathy like sarcoidosis which can itself can lead to type of restrictive cardiomyopathy hypertrophic cardiomyopathy pericardial disease like constrictive pericarditis cardiac tamponade thank you very much